Hello, I am Alfonso McGriff III, recording live downtown at the Hartford Public Library. We are here at the Hartford Book Festival, and uh, if you don't know about it, you better ask somebody. It's a lot of people here, and a lot of vendors here, people selling books and all kind of other items, not just books, but vendors selling all matter of all sorts of things. So if you're not busy and you want something to do, come on down town Hartford to the Hartford Public Library and check out the Hartford Book Festival. There are all kinds of workshops, all kinds of uh, panel discussions, and actually there's also a live stage. It's gonna be poets and people reading their books and all kinds of other things going on. So if you're not busy, you can come on down to the Hartford Public Library and hang out with us for the day. Um, the book festival will be going from it started at 10 and we'll be going, it'll be over at about 4.30, quarter to five, because we have to be out by five. So if you have any plans or don't have any plans, put it in your plans to come check us out down here at the Hartford Book Festival. I'm actually in a workshop right now. And what I'm going to present to you today is a, um, a, a, uh, the name of this workshop is From Thought to Reality. And what I decided to do, because I had many options, different choices I could have made, but what I decided to do is share some information with you about how I created my conversation cards. And, um, and I think it's important because a lot of times we have dreams and thoughts and ideas and we don't follow through to the end. So what I wanted to do is present my um, like my process and and what I did to take my conversation cards from uh, thought to reality so first I'll let you know that uh, a friend of mine is a young lady one day she brought some conversation cards and she said I want to uh, play this game and I said okay let's see so she pulled out the cards and we started playing. And each card had one question. And the questions were like, do you like the Brady Bunch or the Partridge Family? Um, name your favorite Britney Spears song. Um, how many number one hits did Elvis Presley had, have? And so they were very, you know, they were interesting questions. But I realized when we were playing the game, they weren't questions that I, I was really interested in or they weren't questions that got me excited or you know, had my brain working and thinking. So right in the middle of playing the game, I said, you know what? I said, where did you find these cards? And she said, well, I got them at one of the local drugstores. And I said, so they were actually selling these? And she said, yeah. I said, how much you pay for them? She said $7, I paid $7. So I said, okay. So what I then did was start doing research on conversation cards. Of course, the first place I went to was Amazon, typed in conversation cards. And all kinds of cards came up, these table talk cards, and there's any number of decks of conversation cards ideas. If you go to Amazon and you type in conversation cards, you'll see all kinds of stuff. And so I'm looking through all these different types of conversation cards. And one of the things that came to mind was <clears throat> none of these cards are dealing with the things that I think are important. So I said, well, I need to create a deck of cards myself. And I'm, I'm going to create some conversation cards that I think can help people and are meaningful in a way than more than just playing the game. So I work in a hair salon and of course I started crafting all of these different questions for my conversation cards. And when I would think of different questions, I would go into the hair salon and I would pose these questions to the customers and we would deal with those questions as it relates to the conversation cards. So um, 
those, and then they would make some suggestions on some questions and why don't you ask this question or maybe you should ask this question this particular way. And so again, I was taking advice and I was listening to people as I was creating my deck of cards. So after over a certain amount of time, I came up with a list. And this is actually one of my original lists that I came up with from when I first started developing the cards. You can see it, it has orange juice stains on it and all kind of stuff. But this is one of my original lists when I first started developing my conversation cards. And so <clears throat> this is the first thing I did. I wrote the cards down, created the questions, and decided which questions were gonna be on the cards in this particular group, which weren't. And so I had so many questions. My mind, once I, I get focused on something, my mind never stops. And so I was coming up with questions in my sleep. I was dreaming about questions. I was waking up out of my sleep, writing questions down. All of the things that I could think of for these cards, I was focusing on writing questions and uh, creating questions for my deck of conversation cards. So over time, I realized that I had questions relating to money, questions relating to relationships, questions relating to sex, and questions relating to religion. And one of the things that I realized is all four of these categories are categories. When I was growing up, these were things we were kind of taught not to talk about. You don't talk about religion, you don't talk about sex, you definitely don't talk about money, and you don't talk about relationships because you don't try to solve any problems. <laughs> you just fight and then make up. <laughs> so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna create a deck of cards where um, these questions are gonna force us to have to talk about some issues. So. I began dividing the questions up. Again, money, questions about money, questions about sex, questions about relationships, and questions about religion. The four things in many black communities we don't talk about. And I went right after all four of them. Let's go. So, of course, I was getting all kind of advice. Hey, you need to make maybe four different decks of cards. One with just money questions. One with just and one with just sex questions, one with just religion, one with just relationship. And I said, that would be great. But I don't know if I want to be in the conversation card making business. What I want to do is create a deck of cards that covers a lot of things so that, for instance, when people are getting to know each other and they deal with these questions, they don't have to wait 10 or 15 years of hanging around somebody to find out a lot of stuff. You can have one sitting and go through these 58 cards and find out a whole lot about the person sitting in front of you. And people say, well, people won't be honest. They're not going to tell the truth and answer those questions correctly. I said, you're going to learn about the person whether they tell the truth or not. The person sitting in front of you as you ask these questions they're gonna learn about you, and you're gonna learn about them. So that was it, I decided those are the four categories. Now the other interesting thing I did was I came up with multiple questions for each card in each category. So, for instance, um, in, the, in the money category, there's a question that says, would you open a joint bank account with a person you are not married to? And then it says, well, what about with the person you are married to? And then it says, have you ever kept a running total of expenditures for at least one week? Every cent you spent, just keep a total of every cent you spent for a week, all the receipts, everything. And then at the end of a week, you know exactly how much money you spent. Have, have you ever done that? So those are questions on one card in the money category. Uh, an example of another question in money. Would you hand over your check to your partner to handle the bills and manage the money if they were qualified to do so? Would you hand over your money or your check 
to your partner to handle the bills and manage the money if they were qualified to do so. The next question, is it money or the consciousness of the people with the money that is the root of all evil? Is it money or the consciousness of the people with the money that's the root of all evil? A lot of times we hear, even in religious terms, we hear people say money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And money gets identified as the problem when actually it's the person with the money. It doesn't matter what we put in our hands. Our consciousness determines the quality of the actions we take with what's in our hands. So again, my goal is to, to promote, to get people to think about things. I'll grab a couple of other sample questions. Now, let me see. Okay, this is, this is a safe sex question. Now these, because of the sex questions, they get right down to the nitty gritty. These cards are recommended for people who are, you know, 17 or over. So one of the sex questions, are you willing to let your partner know what turns you on that eventually makes you shake? Are you willing to let your partner know what turns you on and eventually makes you shake? Um, or are you one who does not teach? And another question is, what are some of the reasons one's partner would keep saying no to sex? So again, these are questions where the goal is to just generate conversation. Um, okay, that's, I'm not going to mess with that sex category anymore because it's a little out of hand. Now, in the, in the relationship category, a couple of sample questions in the relationship category. Are you bi-curious or have you been in a relationship with the same sex? And nowadays, I think that's an important question because we got a lot of free people out here that's experimenting with a little everything, including animals, whatever. So you might want to know, like, get to know this person's sexual history and background. Um, are you dating someone with no mutual commitment? And um, if you're dating someone with no mutual commitment, should that be the only person you're dating? Again, that, that's kind of some it's wavy territory. A lot of people do a lot of dating without a commitment, but if they find out that person is kind of hanging with somebody else, all hell breaks loose. So again, these are some of the questions that these cards address and deal with. And um, then I'll, I'll grab a couple of questions out of religion. How has organized religion helped society? This is, again, one card. Are the actions of believers consistent with what they say their religious beliefs are? Are all people hypocrites? Is the house of worship a good place to be the soulmate? Again, these are questions, and this is just one card. Each category has 14 cards. And then there are two what I call jokers in this deck as well. So each category has 14 cards, and then there are two jokers. And um, so what I'm going to talk about now, since I kind of gave you some insight on the process of first developing the questions, what I want to do is show you what I did during the process in getting them created. So now the first thing I did, once I got the questions that I wanted and I had the categories, I went to Kinko's. Okay, I went to Kinko's and created my own, what I call my own bootleg version of conversation cards. So um, I went to Kinko, Kinko's, at the time it was called Kinko's, now it's called something else. I can't think of the name of the place. But over there on Farmington Avenue in Hartford. And I had my own cards created and then I started using the cards and testing them with people and saying okay, um, what do you think about these questions? And actually, what I was doing initially was just laying the cards on the table and saying, pick a card and answer the questions. And that's how most people use the cards in general. And so that's what I did. I, I created my own cards. Once I got comfortable with this initial deck, my first Kinko's deck, 
then I created another set of cards that were a little closer to what I thought the original cards would look like. You know, again, um, and, and, but these, these cards actually were color coded. Um, the sex category is pink, relationship category is red, religion category is purple, and of course the money category is green. So I created this color coded deck and then use these and I didn't want my final cards to be Kinko's cards. I wanted them to be professional and I wanted people to, to take them serious. And, and, and I'll tell you, some of the cards that I see being sold on Amazon, some people are happy with the Kinko's deck. Like for a lot of people, this deck would have been just fine. But I, I didn't want to, uh, I wanted to take it a step further and make some good high quality cars that will last a long time. So in order to do that, again, what we're talking about is bringing an idea from thought to reality. And I'm sharing information about my conversation cars and how I brought them from thought to reality. So one of the first things I did was I had to create the actual size the cards would create the actual size the cards would be and the final look the cards would have. Okay? So for instance, in the sex category, this is what I created for the sex category. Um, and of course that was pink. Relation category, that was red. And this, this is, I created the cards on paper. The religion category is purple. Uh, and the two, the two jokers were orange. And of course, you know the money, the money was green. So once I created the cards, uh, individually and set them up the size they needed to be. I then had to set the full deck up so that the people who were printing the cards would know what they're supposed to look like and all that stuff. So I created another page where I set the whole deck up. Actually, they asked me to send it to them like that, a small version of the whole setup. What I also went online and I found somebody who could create a cover for me. So then I had to find somebody to design a cover for the cards. So we could, you know, the back of the cards. And I like these two designs they created. And so that's what I wound up going with on the cover. Now all of this is just part of the process. And then I had to find somebody to actually print the cards. So I, I linked up with a, a person who was connected in China. And this person said they could do the cards and create a nice cover for me and have the cards professionally done. So I said, now that's a winner, that's for sure. So the people who created the cards for me actually sent me this, which is helping give me an idea what the card cover was gonna look like. The, the deck of cards and how they would look, the, 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 um, the box that the cards would be in. You know, um, and again, it's, a, it's an interesting process when you start doing something because I would have never thought of these kind of things until I just started getting the cards done. So <laughs> um, I was like, wow, okay, that's cool. This is how, and the, and, the, and the interesting thing about the box is that they print it and cut it up and it's like one piece, it just gets stamped out, boom. And then it gets glued together and then the cards go in the box. And again, that's something that I learned 
while I was dealing with the process. So the next thing I had to do was come up with a way to promote the cards. And this is just one of the promotions I used. It's a, a, a promotional card that I, uh, that I created. And this is it on paper first. And then we went from paper to the actual promotional card, okay? Um, a good friend of mine came up with this saying on the card, these cards, this game, these questions will take you, pla take you places you have never gone before. Enjoy the ride. So um, I used his quote on one side of the promotional thing, the promotional card, and then, um, you know, and then I put other relevant information on the other side. So this was part of my promotion for the cards. And again, of course, anything that you make, you want to come up with some type of promotion. And then I also had to come up with information to put on the box cover. So this is what I created for the box cover. And I sent it to China so they would know what I needed to do. Um, what I wanted on my box cover. I also created three instructional cards, which I call suggestions for playing with the cards. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of go over them and read them right quick. But these are just suggestions for playing with, with the conversation cards. Most people just throw these three cards out of the way and just start swinging with the cards. But there's a way to play the card, play with the cards and use them to uh, create points. And it's, it's all kind of like an honesty thing because the cards are based on a certain amount of honesty and integrity. So the rules are based uh, built the same way. Getting through a full deck of cards in one sitting is not the objective. The card should be used as a tool to implement conversation. This deck of cards can be customized by removing particular cat, uh, moving a particular category and or specific cards from any one of the categories, depending on the type of conversation desired or the type of people that y'all have around. So the cards can be edited however you want to edit them. For this reason, I can be um, it can be beneficial to have at least two decks of cards. Also, you know, because like if you have two decks of cards, you know, it's just a lot more cards and mix them up real good and, you know, you don't have to keep starting over as you get through the deck, you can keep it going. So it's beneficial to have at least two decks. Also, because of the card point value, distinguishing mark and color code, there are an infinite number of approaches to playing with the cards for points. So there's a lot of different ways to play with the cards for points. Now there's a certain thing on the cards so some people to see and it's like a little smiley face. And the smiley, the smiley face indicates that it's the same card but, but a different subject. Because there are multiple questions on one card a lot of times and sometimes you see a smiley face. That means there's another question that's coming but it's kind of off the subject of the prior questions because sometimes there may be two questions that relate to one another. And then there's a point value on the cards. And then there's a distinguishing mark, in which is one through 58. Each card has a specific number. And then there's a color code. Of course, the color code is uh, green, pink, red, and purple representing money, sex, relationships, and religion. And then you can also decide how to score the cards. So, you know, you can uh, choose a winning score. For example, you get 100 points. Whoever gets 100 points, they win. You know, the, the uh, first person to 100 wins the game. You can set a time limit, and then after that, put a uh, time limit is reached, whoever has the highest score after the time limit. 
another thing you can do, you can decide whether to play as individuals or as teams. So you can use the cards and play as teams and score points. Decide whether to, whether to have, whether or not to have a facilitator or, uh, or do a group vote. Because you can do a facilitator or a group vote. The facilitator would be the person who determines how they felt the person answered the question thoroughly enough to earn the points that represent that particular card. So, um, you know, there are no correct or incorrect answers. So what we're looking for is to feel the, uh, the honesty associated with the question, how people answer, uh, adequately answer the question to get the points. After the cards are thoroughly shuffled, each player is dealt one card. Each player's card must be addressed before another card, uh, another round of cards is dealt. You know, that's another way you can use the cards. Um, there are three options available after each card is dealt. Each player can choose, an adi uh, choose to adequately, we adequately answer the question and be rewarded points. You can choose to pass and not answer the question and not be awarded points. Or if you choose to pass, the card does not have to be presented. The card is just placed back in the deck. Now, one of the reasons why the, you have the option to just pass and not present the card is because sometimes it might be something on there a little bit sensitive, but then you don't want people to feel like, oh, that, they don't want to answer that question because of that, what that question is about. So you can pass and then put the card back in the deck without having to deal with anything like that. Um, you can also choose to switch cards with another player. Card switching must take place before any questions are addressed. So again, these are some of the different ways these cards can be used to play for points. Um, and again, I was just going over some of the suggested ways you can play with the cards. Now what I want to do is kind of give you some insight, uh, continue giving insight on the process. First, like I said, told you earlier, I created the questions. I created the questions and presented them to people and said, hey, what do you think about these questions? Sometimes people added to the questions and, and um, you know, gave me some good suggestions for questions. And then, um, then I created my first deck of bootleg cards. I call them bootleg cards because they was just like Kinko's cards. And, they weren't real professional, but I was able to use them and make a decision on, you know, make more decisions on how I wanted to go about making this happen. Then I created a second deck of cards that had the color code and everything to see how people responded to the color coding and the categories and all of that kind of stuff and the numbers. And then I moved on to have them personal, uh, professionally done. I had to create the cards and the actual size I wanted them to be and set them up, find, find a person who, to make the cards and then set them up so that they can actually um, see all the cards and know what they're supposed to look like and know what the colors are and everything. Then I had to find somebody to actually design a cover for the cards for me. Again, I didn't know I was going to have to do all these things until I just started doing it my first thought was I want to make some conversation cards. Then once I found a company to make the cards, then we had to determine what was going to be on the boxes and they showed me how they were going to do the boxes. Once they showed me the boxes, I had to come up with what was going to be on the cover of the boxes and then send that to them. And once I sent them what I wanted on the cover of the box and on the back of the box, then that's when they went on to produce the cards. I also talked about how I had to create a way to begin advertising the cards. And then this is what I did, um, created a, a little promotional card. These cards, this game, these questions will take you to places you've never gone before. Enjoy the ride. That's something that someone who I gave a tester deck to to look at the cards and tell me what they thought about them. He wrote this to me, and then I liked the quote, so I uh, allowed that quote to be a part of my promotion and advertising for the cards. One of the things the company sent me when 
I was deciding on how to, what I wanted to do and the size I wanted my cards to be, the quality, the type, all of that kind of stuff. They sent me cards that they had done for people already. Um, you know, all kinds of cards. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but they, they just sent me all of these different types of cards that they've done for people. Because one of the things, and I'm dealing with somebody who's in China. So one of the things you, you have to take into consideration when you're dealing with people from another country who also speak another language is there is a lot of imaging going on like for clarity because sometimes the language doesn't bring enough clarity so we ha you have to send me a card and say is this the size card you want even though we can go by measurements because they don't want to print a thousand decks of cards and something's wrong they say is this the size you want now they know what they sent me and we're all clear you did so they sent me different types of cards to choose from and once I finally ordered the cards I had to come up with some type of write-up and promotion for the cards as well I came up with this promotional card that I talked about but then I had to write something to help people understand what these cards were about so what I eventually identified did was I identified these as the world's first real conversation cards. And um, I call them thought-provoking, entertaining, educational, therapeutic, and crazy. Because some of the questions are to the left. And so the write-up says, these conversation cards represent the culmination of listening, thinking, sharing, learning, and growing. Life offers us the opportunity to use our ability to reason so that we can realize our potential. We all have the capacity to experience the constant evolutionary process associated with the understanding of life. It is our inability to manage our emotions that challenge this experience. For most people, these conversation cards will help us know where we stand as it relates to our ability to communicate effectively from a foundation of thought rather than debate and argue from a foundation of emotions. There are a total of 58 conversation cards plus three suggested instructional cards for those who may want to play for points. There are four categories with 14 cards in each category plus two jokers. The game can be played with individuals or teams to earn points. Players can also simply choose a card and answer the questions associated with the card in this category. These cards are also great for speed dating and getting to know people in general. There are four basic categories of questions, money, sex, relationships, and religion. These conversation cards can be customized by removing individual cards or an entire category depending on the desire of the host and or players. Some of the questions are personal and open in nature. As a result, these conversation cards are recommended for ages 17 and above. These conversation cards are a great catalyst for starting the interaction. It is then our responsibility to exercise enough emotional intelligence to have a productive, thought-provoking, provo provoking, reasoned exchange. This type of exchange can contribute to our own personal growth and development and our personal peace as well. My thoughts about how to use these conversation cards are based on a very limited understanding of life and how people interact. This approach is correct only for those who see the value in using it. So, I did a write-up for the cards while they were being uh, printed, and then I created some uh, promotional avatar, promotional, some other promotional things. Like this is a promotional. It's a card game. It's a conversation game. You can play for points. Um, you can compete as teams. Just general information. Then I. Um, did a question and answer. One of the great things about developing any product is you want to you want to come up with uh, um, frequently asked questions, and you want to answer those frequently asked questions. So while I was developing these cards, I started taking note of the different questions people were asking, and then I created what I call the top eleven questions and answers. 
Are these cars created for a particular group or culture? The answer is these cars are for all groups and cultures. Question, how do you win the game? The answer, the goal is to learn how to better communicate and share information, not necessarily win. However, if you're playing for points, the winner will be the person who has the most points at the end of the game. How do you score or acquire points? You score points by giving good, thorough answers to the questions. Is it possible to receive partial points? Is it possible, possible to receive partial points if the player, players agree to do so before the game starts? How many categories are there? Of course, you know there's sex, money, religion, and relationships. Can you remove certain cards from certain categories? Yes, that has been answered. Yes, you can edit the cards how you choose. Do you have to answer all of the questions on each card? It depends on how the participants agree to play the game before starting. What is the significance of the big and little joker? The big and little joker happen to have a greater point value than most of the other cards. That's the significance. Um, what is an adequate answer? Adequate answers are determined by the vote of the players or the facilitator. What if a player receives a card and wants to remove from the deck? It is important for the players to be comfortable. If a player is uncomfortable with a particular card, it can be removed from the deck, no problem. And can a player reveal their card too soon? Only if a player is reading their card or talking at the same time another person is. Otherwise, it just depends on how the participants have decided to play the game. So again, those are my Q&A. And what I'll do now is show you the actual cards. These, these are the final product, uh, conscious conversation cards. This is one of the designs. I do have some other cards with the other design on the back of the deck as well. So the they they have two different designs but it's the same deck inside the uh, inside the box. So this particular deck has another design. And um so these are the actual cards. These are the actual cards. The actual conversation cards. The name of this workshop is from thought to reality and I'm just talking about how I came up with an idea for creating my own deck of conversation cards and some of the things that helped me bring the thought of my own conversation cards to reality. Anybody got any questions? Not as yet. I apologize for being late. Oh, man, you're not late. You're right on time. God bless. You're right on time. So uh, now you want me to read some more questions from the cards? Sure. Okay. Um, how old are you? Uh, 16. 16? Can't read the sex questions. You're too young. Too young. Got to be 17, though. No. no um, <laughs> so, um, money. Money is always a good, uh, always a good, good um, category. Okay, this is a good one. I like this one. If someone asks, how much money would you need to have to be satisfied? How much would it be? Like, how much money would you need to say, you know what, I am good. I'm straight. I can pay my bills. I can travel. I can buy the kind of car I want. Whatever. I can. Even if you say, well, I don't even have to work. I don't have to work. How much money would it be? Do you have a, 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 what do you call it, a number in mind? It's been such an artful living experience the last two years. You know, it's hard to qualify that question because living frugally has its merits. Mm -hmm. And frankly, on what I'm living on, I'm just happy for the freedom of movement, mm -hmm. you know, that I decide my day. So, to put a figure out there, I'm living on less than $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, my rent is reasonable. But I'm like what they call a cheap date. I walked from my apartment in loving nature, mm -hmm. walking through Bushnell Park like I'm in New York. Right. You know, we bumped heads in Brooklyn. I felt like I was in, you know, Central Park. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, for other folks, that's a lot of tension. You know, $1,500 a month, you know, but for me, I'm like covering all my necessary expenses and have the ability to plug in the things that nourish me, like being here now. Right. So, but technically, I'm living all less than $1,500 a month, you know, and uh, making it work. You now, know? you know, the question is, is interesting to me because I have this thought of having enough money to not have to think about money. Because I want to know, see this whole setup is designed to keep us always trying to keep up and catch up. Chase the tail. Keep up and catch up. And I want to know what my thought process is capable of bringing forth if I don't have to think about bills. Like, just literally, there's an account, it's an automatic withdrawal <laughs> to the extent that I don't even have to think about bills. Um, because I've been able to uh, free myself to some degree from overly concerned about what people think, about how I choose to live my life. I've been able to f unloosen myself from one of the biggest challenges, which is the race-based thought process and paradigm, being caught up in race-based thinking as opposed to recognizing I'm in the forest and there are certain realities associated with this forest and it's my responsibility to not be angry because lions bite but to understand they do and act like I know. And so I've been able to loosen myself from, I think I'm about 90% loosened from the race-based paradigm and thinking constantly and because life is huge, man. Mm -hmm. And the only major thing, because I'm, I'm cool, man. I don't spend a lot of energy on tomorrow and what could potentially happen. And you know, every now and then something might flash before me and I'll think about it, but I don't spend a bunch of energy in it. I try to hang out in the now as much as possible. So financially for me, I wanna know what it's like to not have to think about money. And there are like people who are in the position to do so, but don't have the mindset to wanna do it. So for instance, if I'm scuffling on, like you said, $1,500 a month, they're scuffling on $1.5 million a month because they just put themselves in a position to have bigger bills and bigger situations. And, and we're both moving in the same mindset. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's not about the money. It's, it's about how you manage how we manage our lives. Yeah, that's really so but so for me, if 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 I were to put a figure on on how much I'd be good with just a monthly figure to be able to have a certain because I'm not like a, a big high end spending dude, but to have a certain degree of freedom of having to just always think about because you know as an artist too, like. If you know you are artist and you know you creative, you know you got some stuff in you, to have that freedom, like you want to be able to bring that out. And and the, the way this whole thing is set up, it kind of it's just, it's almost like a suppressant to some degree, you know. So again, so for me, I would say about 20 G's a month, I'm good. You know. And, and for me, that's like a whole lot. But 20 G's a month, I'm, I'm straight.
I'm straight. I, 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 I think I'll be all right. I, I won't be, you know. I won't argue with that either, but uh, it's amazing once you dissolve some of those attachments, it's like you step into another room of activity. You step into a whole And dude. it's like you're glowing, and that's why all these people are so upset. Right, man. You, know, you stop this, realizing. There's an expression by the Chinese, uh, be like the sun at midday. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks are like, they only want to shine on their crew, themselves, mm -hmm. get the community, but be like the sun of the day and you nourish everything and you get nourished. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. And and what my one of one of my little my personal sayings is I'll be the sun and the flowers will find me. I'll just move, man. <laughs> and and whoever we if we rolling in the same energy, let's rock and roll. But you know, I don't have to be out here trying to change anybody or get anybody to do anything or any of this stuff, man. Um, and the beautiful thing about life is that uh, when when you kind of start getting into life, because like when you're born into this reality, you have to like graduate or transcend into life mm -hmm. if you ever do it because mm -hmm. many of us don't do it in our entire lifetime we don't experience life we 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 allow ourselves to be conditioned to believe we have to be struggling and fighting and overcoming for our whole life mm -hmm. no like somebody asked me to join the struggle i'm running in the opposite direction because the struggle can be forever and if a lifetime was a thousand years and you lived a million lifetimes, if your consciousness believes you're supposed to be a part of a struggle, you will struggle for that thousand years and million lifetimes, you know? But there's always a reason to be struggling and be upset. That's another thing uh, we've been conditioned to search for reasons to be offended. You know, that's just a, such a waste of life. So, you know, I, I want to know what this... I want to know what my consciousness has laying in the cut when it's just open and free and mm -hmm. not burdened by the setup. Mm -hmm. You dig? Yeah, past history. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting question. If you knew in advance the person you were interested in had an alcohol, drug, or gambling problem, would you still give him a shot? Now, for me as an adult, having seen these situations and if I knew in advance, probably not. I would wish them well. <laughs> I, yeah, I concur. I mean, you know, tough love, being able to say no is just as beautiful as saying yes. And sometimes people need to hear that no, you need help. Instead of the arm on the shoulder, oh, you're looking great. And staggering through your apartment, staggering into your life, and you just enable it. Come on, baby. Sometimes you need to say, hey, you need help. And, you know, that's unconditional love as I look at it. You know, being yeah. able to say, hey, you need help, sir or ma'am, you know, and I love you, but you've caused a lot of self destruction and destruction in your circle, our circle. Giving you that ray of light. As far as I'm looking at it, you right. know, please get help. You know, I can dig it. <laughs> I had a friend live on my couch for a year and a half, and I'm like, Whoa. man, what happened? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was very insightful. Uh, you know, he, uh, man, you know, when are you gonna get up? <laughs> 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 you know, the sun is out there, man. I'm like, come on, man, it's too much beauty out here, man. When are you gonna get up? hand stayed on my remote. I think he put my TV into the early death. Oh. <laughs> but again, he didn't. He, he couldn't do nothing you didn't allow. You got it. I, he came to my door and I was hesitant. I said, okay, you ain't got nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And it was revelatory. We actually had lived together in the 80s. The mm -hmm. man had a 9 to 5. He was married. Something happened. Something you know, and bam. You, man, if you are, if you a year out of somebody's life, you don't know who you did. If you've been with them the whole time, you still don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we were having so much fun in the 80s and mm -hmm. I was overlooking those rough 
bitch. It's good to mm-hmm. begin to set. 25 years later, mm, my vision has expanded. I'm saying, well, you need help. You can slop. You got to make some more emotion. And, you know, you're a grown man. Mm-hmm. One more question. <laughs> Is it ever okay to have to tell a lie? It's okay sometimes to just go on mm-hmm. and let one fly. It's all about timing. You know, that's a good, you know, moral question. <laughs> Is it moral? Because, you know, morals, man, that's a whole different issue. Yeah. When you start talking about morals, like, for instance, somebody else told me it was not moral, immoral to steal. And I said that was based on their morals. If I'm really hungry and I'm laying down in the street starving and I, didn't, I ain't eating in a month and I'm getting dizzy and uh, I'm not going to buy somebody else's morals and I'm going to just lay down and die. I might have to go on and snatch a hot dog somewhere, you know. So, you like know. Squirrels. <laughs> they always I'm telling you, man. So I don't know if I can go buy somebody else's morals. But I, I have to go by mine. I have to go by what works for me. That's why I don't try to follow anybody else's laws. Um, Let's put it this way. I'm glad I raised the occasion. But at certain times, you know, we waited on that one. But the other occasions where it was good that spoke up, you yeah. know? Yeah. Otherwise, it could be a situation where these folks would feel, well, Chan's going to come to my rescue every time, and I can just get away. I think the person had great respect for me for busting them in mm-hmm. a sense. You know, I could have just said, nah, he didn't even take that record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got, said, yeah. When, you, when, you, when you refuse to accept and deal with reality, you bring a whole bunch of unnecessary discomfort to yourself. Mm-hmm. It's better to accept the reality. Accepting reality doesn't mean you're accepting what's going on. It means you're accepting the reality about a situation, and now based on what you know about your acceptance of that reality, you come up with a plan on dealing with that reality. Most of us spend too much time in waiting for something to change or hoping something change or thinking that we getting mad will make something change. No, man, accept the reality, Come up with a plan on how to deal with that reality. The work. That's what I say. The work. So that's my um, my little workshop from thought to reality, dealing with these conversation cards. Uh, I hope some of y'all got something out of it, and you can get a deck of these cards one day. Cards cost twenty dollars, and um, thanks for hanging out. All right, bro. Hey, y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. All right, well done, man. Thank you. All right.